the building. And right now we have a special guest as we can see. But before we get to our very special guest, we got the homies in the building. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Micah, a.k.a. CMS. Yo, yo, and hey, everybody, what's going on? This is Lenny B, a.k.a. L Boogie. And we are the, the Purple, purple under Underground. Right. Yeah. All right. And right now, we have the often imitated, never duplicated, funk brother. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That yes. that is exceptional. Yes. Damn. In the building. Funk brother DT. Funk brother I love DT. That. Wow. How you doing that, tonight, sir? That was the best tribute ever. Oh, and, and fantastic. That's great. Wow. <laughs> that is that is the best tribute ever. Seeing all three of those pop up. That's great. I'm doing yeah. great. I'm, I'm I've been looking forward to this for a while. I've been looking forward to this since April. Since we oh, talked yeah. about doing this in April. So right. yeah. No, get yeah. hang out. That's great. So I'm I'm very excited about this. Grill me, right. put me on the hot seat, ask me to squeeze my brain. <laughs> All, right. Need to. All right, first, I, I know as a writer you can't divulge your sources. What? But but can we go into a little bit of your background? You know what I mean? And how you got into this guy here. There was a there's a there's a book called The Vault. Uh, actually, I got it up on my shelf somewhere. I don't know where my vault is, but there's a book called The Vault, which was done by Uptown Magazine, and uh, we did this years ago. I used to write for Uptown Magazine. If you know Uptown Magazine, it's a uh, print magazine in Sweden. Uh, Peter Nelson was the main guy, but had a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people that worked on it ended up going and doing Prince Vault. Things like that. And uh, years ago, I started talking about doing a book like this, a uh, studio sessions book. And I talked to Pierre Nelson about it and said, wouldn't it be cool if we could do that? And we laughed about it because we realized, no, we could never do it. It'd be insane. And uh, I started nibbling at it a couple years ago and been working on it for about 20 years, just on and off. And about four or five years ago, my wife said to me, are you going to finish this book? Or is this just an expensive hobby? And I was like, all right, I'll finish the book. So the beginning of 2016, January to March, I started working on the book, and I finished it in mid-March, which is a month before Prince died. And uh, I had the book done, but along the way, I'd interviewed 40 or so different people that worked for the, in the studio, most of the engineers uh, the, for, the, um, for this book, a lot of the revolution, um, pretty much every Susan Rogers, Peggy McCreary, the engineers, and, all this. and I thought, oh gosh, I don't know if I should come out with this because I didn't want to seem like you know somebody who was coming out with a book right after Prince passed. Um, it's still weird for me to say that Prince died. I, I don't know what that is for me. I'm just, I, I, it's easier for me to say Prince passed or Prince isn't here. I don't know how to explain that. It's a weird thing inside my head. But I called a lot of people that I, I interviewed and I asked them, what should I do? Should I come out with this book? Should I not? And they all said, look, you worked on this for years. It's got a lot of important stuff in it, and it's a different book than anybody else wrote. You should come out with it. So I, I started looking for a publishing uh, place to publish it, found somebody. Along the way, I started adding interviews to it. Um, Wendy came along. Lisa came along. Susanna came along. So it started growing even more. So the book was done, but I started adding things uh, over time, and then it eventually came out last November, I think. And uh, it's it's been gotten some attention. It's, yeah, it's, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you know. And you guys like the book? Yes, love yes. it. Yes, definitely. definitely. So tell me what what do you guys like about it? So I know because I want to write more of these and I want to know what works and what you know that kind of stuff. What do you like about it? Well, it, it, it's just the, the massive information overload. Right. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? It, it's kind of like what was the book? What was the book Uptown had did? Days of Wild. Days of Wild. It, it, it yeah. kind of remind me of that, like one right. that you keep going back to when you need yeah. information. Exactly. It, it, it's so much information mm -hmm. in this that off of this book, I'm doing a couple videos on. It's you know cool. I mean? I, the sure. cool thing about the book to me is it's a reference book. 
Right. And not in a boring way because it could have just I could have just done a bunch of dates and that was it. But I wanted to write a good story about him and right. what he did and what his life was like during this time. So the story is told from uh, three, if you haven't read the book, January first, nineteen eighty three through uh, December thirty first, nineteen eighty four. And it's all the different things going from being a cult star to the biggest star on the planet. And at the end of the book, he's like, he's tired of being Mr. Purple Rain. He's like, I'm still on the Purple Rain tour, but I'm over this. I just want to get done with this. And, and uh, to me, that's a pretty cool story. I don't think anybody's really told that story before about this guy. And it's just one part of the story of his life. I mean, the guy, mm -hmm. you look at all the different ups and downs that he had, that was the biggest selling thing. Some people would argue it's his best thing. Some people would say it's his most commercial. It, but regardless, it was his most powerful when it came to the movie, popularity, the, mo the first introduction to most people. Most people were first introduced to him with uh, Purple Rain. So it makes sense that that would be the first book I'd want to write because that's mm -hmm. how most people met him. So I want most people to meet the book, say, the book series that way. So, yeah. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. 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 Definitely. I'm glad you guys like it. I mean, I, when you, it's funny when you write a book like this. Any book, any author will tell you. You write a book. This is where I sit. This is I sit all. You know, when I write, I'm sitting here like this the whole time, writing like that, right here. And I don't know whether anybody's going to like this stuff. You know, you're sitting there hoping that by the time I'm done, somebody's going to like it. But you write in a vacuum, and you kind of, you know, it's, like, it's you're doing a hail mary, and you're just hoping there's somebody out there ready to catch the ball down downfield. And so far, it seems like people have enjoyed, like I said, that they, they, they've asked for seconds and thirds. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying. Right. I'm hoping to do that. So, yeah. One uh, thing that stands out to me in the book is Thursday, August 8th, 18th, 1983. Thursday, August 8th? Let me think. Wait, before I look, even look. Thursday, August 8th. 18th. 18th. Uh, 18, oh, 18th. Okay, Thursday, August 18th is the, they're recording the strings for um, Purple Rain. Oh, geez. The three three songs they're recording strings for, correct? 18th C of August. Computer Blue, Baby I'm a Star, and Purple Rain. Yeah, I have to know now, this stuff. The, the, this the is, story, uh, yeah. what Lisa Coleman said, when she said, uh, he said, would you guys go out there and say this? And she said, I didn't think twice, honestly. I hate to say that it doesn't mean anything. Is it tea? Is it a bathtub? All right. <laughs> Whatever you want to think, it was just being cheeky. And then Wendy said, we didn't even think it was this weird psychosexual lesbian thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's What's cool is that was just something that was a throwaway. That he just said, here, wrote it down on a piece of paper, handed it to him and right. said, okay, you know, go on and say this. And they said it, you know, it took five minutes to do. And it's still one of these things that we still think about with, uh, you know, Wendy. Yes, Lisa, is the water warm enough? Yes, Lisa. We still, you can't hear that song without thinking of that thing. We don't know what it means, and they're saying the same thing. But they just recorded on, you know, out of thousands of hours they spent in the studio. But to us, it's something really important. And it's cool to hear them say what was involved with that. And, and even what they were doing, it's sort of a throwaway, but to us, it means something. Right. You know? Yeah, for sure. I love right. that. Yeah. That's funny. I love that. That's a cool day too. Funny thing about that date is that's the first page I showed to uh, when I was when I first wrote the book. I was trying to find somebody to do the forward for me, and a friend of mine knew Questlove, and it was the first. That's the first page we got to show him was the 18th of August, and he was like, <laughs> he was like, this is the bomb. You you have to do this, and so he got really excited about this and started getting behind it. But which I think that's a great date to start looking to see what kind of stuff is in the book because right. it, it does it, it's you know you've got a lot that happened on that day in that month actually the biggest month is probably the following month September of '83 because it's pretty much the whole month of doing beautiful ones right. all kinds of stuff so yeah that's crazy mm -hmm. that's crazy yes sir yeah. that's so, at that time that that period. I mean, there's so much music that we know that's in our DNA now that just, we can hear the first second and we know the entire song, our body starts moving in that way, freaking amazing song. Right. That's a guy in the studio for, a, for 24 hours by himself 
that's, that's nobody does that kind of stuff. Right. That's what's so cool right. about it, is hearing right. the engineers talk about what was involved with with uh, you know whether he's in a good mood that day or bad mood that day, and you can kind of hear if he's in love or if he's happy or sad or angry in his music because his music is he'll sometimes record two or three songs in a day. You get a snapshot of what he was doing. Or somebody like Michael might do a song over the course of three weeks, you know, and you'll have different engineers come in, different studio people, and so you don't you know, spend a week on the sound, the drum sounds. Prince is like, this is what I'll get, this is what I got, and this is what you're going to hear. And what you hear, he'll do some overdubs later, but for the most part, what you're hearing is what he did that day. And mm -hmm. so you get a real idea of what his mood was at noon on that date. You know, and that's kind of funny to me. Is he's talking to us in ways we didn't know in his music. That's kind of fun to me to, to understand the person a little bit more. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's Definitely. what I like about the book. I like that it, it it's almost like you get a peek into Prince's life just by reading what songs he did that day like you said the engineers talking about his mood right and with um all of the hype back in the day about how he would say hey if you wanted to know if you want to know about me listening to my song which right. is it wasn't it wasn't all hype it was true <laughs> right exactly exactly and that's the thing is you want to know about prince he even says that in the beginning of the book and uh, he says you know all my life is in my music and you realize that's not just him saying whatever, because he would do say he would say some crazy things. But that's him it really laying down, this is my yellow brick road. Follow this. And you right. run. And that to me makes so much sense when you start seeing the songs in context of his life. He broke up with somebody here, he was angry here, you know, what he started a tour here, so he crammed a bunch of stuff in there as soon as he could. Um, there's a great story about I think it was recording Jungle Love and he mm -hmm. came to the studio angry. And Peggy's like, you know, there were days that he'd come in and you knew when he's wearing something, you're just like, oh my God, I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the one he's picking on this day. And everybody's looking at you going, thank God it's not me. You know, and, and I thought that's, because there's days he wasn't happy. You know, right. we, we all would think of Prince as being this, you know, guy that just creates music and that's it. But you got to, any, every artist has a mood, you know, and, and, uh, Susan Rogers said a great line that she said, um, Great art comes from conflict, and Prince was definitely mm -hmm. conflicted. And you realize, yeah, you know, this guy was going through a lot. You know, yeah, he could be uh, happy, seeming happy with one person, you know, dating. But the guy dated a lot, so the guy had a lot of influences from different people. And, you know, he would be – here's the thing. Looking at the book, what he did in this amount of time, he recorded an album for – this is just in the beginning of 83 – or 84 – Recorded the rest of uh, a Purple Rain album, album by the time, album by Sheena East, uh, Sheila E, a song for Sheena Easton, an album for um, um, Apollonia Six, an album for the uh, family, a song for Stevie Nicks, all of it, and getting ready for a tour, finishing up a movie, um, all of it in seven, eight months, and that that's just part of the book. 1983, mm -hmm. he was doing the 1999 tour. He, the book has he was in this is a two year period. He was on stage over a hundred times in this two-year period, two different mm -hmm. tours. Um, you know, played First Avenue, played, you know, filmed a movie. Uh, uh, you know, it's just the amount of stuff this guy did during this time, you just went, nobody. You know, most people will come out with an album every two or three years, but he's coming out with albums, you know, every other month with somebody else. That's just, and, and doing most of it himself. Right. I just, that just blows my mind. And when you start seeing day-to-day -day grind of what he's doing, he would have days that he'd go into the next day, go into the next day, and he's going, dude, do you ever sleep? Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> oh, I mean, anytime I think I'm really busy, I just pick up the book and go, okay, all right, that guy's busy. Right. Mm -hmm. That guy's busy. Yeah. All right, I'm on my chair. And, and I'm still on this computer blue thing, man, because computer blue, yo... <laughs> Matt Fink said a lot of Prince songs, the first time you hear them, you go, what the heck did I just hear? Prince songs were more complex than the average song, pop songs. 
Yep. You know what I mean? And 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 I'm thinking about this is all this I'm jumping from August 18th to August 30th with the computer blood blue over overdubs. Right. You know what mm. I mean? And when I think about uh uh back then uh with the bootlegs before it came out originally on um Purple Rain Deluxe last year, the hallway yeah. speech version. You know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm mainly speaking on that. Like, just yeah, how yeah. great of a song it was, or is, rather. Right. You know, and it, it's just amazing with this song how much was actually put into it. This is one of the things that people don't understand, because usually you record uh, one song for, you know, a day or whatever it was. Computer Blue, Purple Rain, a few other songs, he worked on like for a week or two. I mean, really intensely. Right. Computer Blue, as I recall, I think he finished at the end of August. I think the August 30th, he right. wrapped it up on that, on that day. Um, and then he went back into September, did uh, um, I Would Die For You, uh, several other songs then. But he would sometimes wrap up a song at the end of the month. I think he put a deadline on himself saying, I got to get this thing done by this date. Because he did that with several albums, you see, in the spring of 84. He would finish now, finish the Time album, finish the Apollonia 6 album on the end of the month, kind of uh, almost as if he was doing it by a clock. Uh, but yeah, but Computer Blue, I mean, the depth of all the things that he went in there, I think in the book I called it the, his, uh, his Bohemian Rhapsody, because it really is like his big, epic, you know, choruses and everything like that. It's, it's a huge song. And yeah, we've, we've heard the song for a long time, because it's floated around out there, but I man, I was really happy when they released it officially on the Purple Rain oh. Deluxe. You know, it was nice having it sounding nicer, and it just it's cool to have it officially out there so that people outside of us can hear that. Mm. You know, because yes, a lot of fans, you got all of us are collectors, and we're all, you know, completists. We want to hear every note, you know, we got heard, mm. every live thing, and we're never going to, but want to and so I think it's cool that people outside of mega fans like four of us get to hear some of the stuff and, and expand the amount of, of uh, fans he has you know because that's to me the big thing right now is we got to make sure that he gets noticed outside of our community because our community is pretty tight and we'll listen to anything mm -hmm. you know I know people that love songs on the um, on the Purple Rain thing I'm going yeah it's not my favorite song but there's always somebody that loves one of these songs. And that's the cool thing mm -hmm. about them. So some people love the jazz stuff. Some people love the blues stuff, the pop stuff. There's always somebody that does love this stuff. Mm -hmm. cool. well, what I hope to do with this book and just knowing people is expand the amount of fan base the guy has. Because he can't be out there touring now. And we're sort of having to do the heavy lifting. You know, and that's the big thing. Is, right. is, is, mm -hmm. so, something I thought about was Prince is a bundle of energy. And they always say energy can't go away. Energy has to just move. You can't destroy energy. When Prince passed, that energy is still there, but now it's in all of us. And we kind of all have to go and make sure everybody we know will listen to this stuff, will respect this stuff, and prop him up because now us to do up to us to do the heavy lifting on this stuff. And so I'm I'm all about making sure everybody I know knows about this. You know, when I go to Minneapolis, you guys are up in Minneapolis. It was an amazing time up there, just being around, and we're in a little yeah. bubble of, of everybody just kind of like, this is the best thing ever. It took me about two or three weeks after I got home because to get over that. I <laughs> hope to get that kind of thing out to everybody because people need to know this. This is unifying. You know, this, this stuff brings people together of every race and culture and everything. We're all out there jamming to the same stuff. And there's something special about that. There's something amazing that, that, and healing about that. And I don't think people understand... How important music so the is Purple because... Rain Deluxe. And now, uh, since you did all the research for this amazing book, I was curious to know: Were you uh, pleased with the with the release, or I mean, what's your likes or dislikes, or okay. were you uh, like, far as the vault material? Okay. Were you? I, I'm. I go two different ways on this. One is I'm happy they're coming out with anything. You know, I am, mm. and like all, I, I guarantee all four of us went right to the outtakes CD first right. in that. Mm -hmm. you know, I've heard Purple Rain, got that. I've seen mm -hmm. that concert, got that. 
I don't mm -hmm. care about the edits. Fine. I went right to actually that was the disc that fell out of my container first onto the floor, um, and I picked that up, put it in, and that was the stuff I listened to first, and I listened to it over and over and over, and, and uh, Love and Sex and things like that. We all wanted to hear that stuff. We'd all heard titles of the stuff, and I heard some of the stuff because I wrote about some of this in the book. But we all were hungry for this stuff. I want to see a five CD set, you know. We're never going to get what we want. Even though, we, even if a five CD set came out, there'd be people in the community would say, "Ah, oh, but you missed the twenty seconds in, you know, mm. this song, and that makes the song." And we're like, "No, well, you know, we're never going to be completely happy because then we want to hear the rehearsal of when he taught them Purple Rain, and then we want to hear this. We're never going to be completely happy." But my thought is, I want to thank the people that were behind doing something. Get the ball rolling. Get the next one out. Get the next one out. Get... It's going to take a little time. You've got to also got a vault of, I don't know how many songs are in there. It's going to take some time for somebody to go through all that stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. He wasn't, you've seen the pictures out there of the vault. He wasn't real good at keeping track of things. And, you know, things would be on the shelf just gathering dust. And, mm -hmm. you know, they need to have somebody that kind of goes through, knows this stuff, and loves this stuff. Right. right, preserve it. Yep. Yeah, preserve it. Mm -hmm. And I'm all happy that it went to, you know, that it's being archived now and that there's somebody out there doing this stuff and, and making it so that we can hear this stuff. We'll be listening to this stuff for years, and they'll find ways to get this stuff out to us. For years. Yeah, Purple Rain is a, a sampler. It wasn't perfect. I'm sure that they thought we could have done more with this, but they wanted to get something out. I'm glad they did, but yeah, I want to get a 1999 one out. I want to get a Sign of the Times mega disc out. You know, it has Crystal Ball and Dream Factory mm -hmm. on it. I want to get a Black Album Deluxe. You know, whatever it is, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll buy it no matter what. I'll buy. I'm buying buy oh, this yeah. uh, this thing coming out the uh, um, piano and uh, microphone thing. Yeah. Even oh, though, yeah. I've, even though I've had that tape for years. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. buy it. You know, I, my thought is, I want to make sure I buy the stuff and make, and let them know that there's a market out there. Because right. if we don't do that, then they're not going to release things. Right. It's it's in their best Spot interest. Right on. Yeah, I will. Yeah, and so I just like when I see a magazine that has a, a good, well-researched article reference. Uncut, I think, has one recently. A few those. I'll buy the magazine, even if I've read the article. I'll buy the magazine because I want to make sure that magazines know it's financially in their best benefit to write good articles about right. this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. if it's somebody's exactly. slapped together, I'm not going to buy it. But if somebody sat there and interviewed the Revolution or the MPG, who was amazing and always seems to get overlooked. When people are talking about it, and the revolution, the MBG is fantastic. Um, I just think that all this stuff deserves to be heard. The bands that are out there playing, the family, the revolution, the MBG, the time, Maserati, whoever's out there doing Sheila E. I saw Sheila in, in uh, Vegas recently. It's an amazing show. If you get the chance mm -hmm. to see that, it's freaking amazing. But I, I, I want them to keep getting the word out there about how magic Prince was. And, like I said, articles, books that are well done. I want people to see these kind of things. Not just mine. You know, Steve Park's got a great book. Uh, Sheen's got a great book. You know, people should know about these things and see them and understand and hear the stories. And it makes them more personal. You know, and it makes Prince, it makes me listen to his music different once I hear what was went into some of this stuff or what he was like as a person. I find myself wanting to listen to music again. You know, especially if I find out, oh, that was inspired by his time with this person, I want to like listen to that again, now knowing he was coming from this with a broken heart or, you know, things like that. That's important to me. It makes me listen to his, his music again for the first time, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, well, sir. Well, Amen. My, my, my only beef with the Purple Rain Deluxe, of course, they, they oh. had a, a whole lot of stuff they could have choose from from the outside. Oh, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I loved it regardless, but a lot of people know this. I had a problem with the DVD. You know what I mean? It's too much technology out here for you to to, to, to put this out like this when I have a bootleg copy that's better. What? You know what I mean? So I was really, I, I was I really upset laser, about that. I have it on Laserdisc. I haven't watched it for years. Mm -hmm. Well, again, most of us have that. You know, so it's like, I, I would like to see some of the concerts that we didn't have copies right. of. You know, yeah. I would love to see a documentary about the after shows. 
Right. I, I would love to see, you know, whatever it is. I'm just hungry for this stuff. And I, I don't, you know, I mean, yeah, the first one is them trying to figure it out. Right. I get it. It's, right. you know, my, my first date with my wife was awkward. But we've lasted 30 years. So yeah. you can have a stumble a little bit. Right. But, right. you know, it, 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 you can work out. I, I'm, I'm not giving up on what they're doing. I think that they got some good minds behind some of this stuff. And and I am you know I'm I'm I'll always be talking if they're doing the right thing I will be hyping them you know that's kind of what I think because again he can't tour right now so the guy who used to get all the news out there the guy used to you know the guy who would get the money coming into Paisley can't do that anymore he's not right. here and so mm -hmm. I don't mind that I, I, yeah am I a little frustrated that Paisley's a, a museum sometimes at the same time. I went there, and I, I, you know, as frustrating as it was, it was cool to go in there. I would never have gotten to go into Paisley Park, you know, other than this. And and I want to make sure they get business. I want to make sure they, they figure out how to do this right. Because they'll figure it out. They haven't figured it out yet. Right. right. He's only been gone for two years. Right. It takes some time for them to figure out what any didn't leave a will. You know, that's right. the thing. If you didn't leave a will, we're all stumbling around in the dark. A large room with no light, and and just trying to figure mm. out what to do, and and none of us know, and, and they don't know. So, you know, they'll figure. And if if you and I, if we're all having this conversation in ten years, and having problems, then then you know it's an issue. But if we're if we're getting this, you know, things getting coming to us slowly along the way. Okay, I want. I would rather get it right. I, you know, we're going to be hearing stuff like this for 20, 30 years. I would like it all now, but, you know, that's just the way it is. It's, you know, they're still releasing uh, Jimi Hendrix stuff. Oh, yeah. He's been, gone, he's been gone, you know, for almost 50 years. So, mm. and, and it's still beef inside the Hendrix estate, so, you know, that, that uh. beef going to be forever. Oh, yeah, Especially yeah. So, and some of the stuff's good. I mean, I just heard the, the one that came out last year, and I was like, oh, yeah. Here. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I understand that they can't just dump it all on us. But, right. you know, I want them to do it well. I want them to do it crafted well. Go to the engineers, talk to them, find out the dates and all this stuff. And if they want to use my book or they want, you know, help, I'm sure there's a lot of people in this community that were willing to, to help out with what we know and things like that. So, right. You know, right. Mm -hmm. I thought. Something else yeah. I want to read from the book that I have highlighted. This is a okay. conversation that we have all the time. For some reason, I don't know why, <clears throat> but performers like Michael Jackson took weeks in the studio getting to the sound, getting the sound perfect for every track. For the most part, Prince was more immediate in finding his sound, and until this period, he generally worked on the music quickly and moved on. Prince taught us perfection and spontane spontaneity. 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 <laughs> explain <laughs> explain like Terry Lewis. You just do it. And whatever it is, it's perfect. Create. Don't ponder what you created. You know, I, I thought that was very interesting due to the fact that uh, uh, me and Michael, we was having this conversation about uh, songs Michael wrote versus how many songs Prince wrote. And it wasn't, it wasn't like the Michael versus Prince conversation. It, there was a third party involved. You know what I mean? And th th this, I thought that this particular line in the book would be great for him to hear. Right. You know what I mean? Just, just, just how, how gifted Prince really was. You I know what I mean? Have, versus... I I agree. I think, yeah. I think people, I, it's funny. I understood he was always gifted until I started really looking into how much he did. And I was like, who can do that? And different songs. You just realize this guy had a lot that he had to get out. He had to get this stuff out. And if, mm -hmm. uh, Alan Leeds called it, um, uh, I forget what he called it, but he just said, he was just, he just spitting it out. And just, you know, and, and it, makes, it makes some sense. This guy just had to get it out on tape. And then he moved mm -hmm. on to the next one. And and I think the difference is you got MJ doing stuff. You'd have other people coming in. You need Quincy Jones or you need Cameron Lewis to help him out. A lot of these artists out there can't do what Prince did. 
Prince could write the song, then walk around the studio and grab the bass, play the bass, grab the guitar, grab the guitar, you know, play it better than anybody. And there was nobody that could come in the studio for the most part and play better than him. You know, whereas Michael would have to bring in somebody that, you know, could play this thing and he had to explain it to them and they'd play it and they'd interpret it. Prince was actually mm -hmm. locked in directly. So that's the thing, it's directly from Prince. Whereas Michael needed somebody that could kind of process this for him. And I think that that's, did you guys see um, This Is It? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's great. I love the movie, but it was like, you see him sitting there with a musician saying, you know, like talking to him like this, explaining it. I don't think Prince really had to do that that much. I mean, right. Verses and stuff like this. But he could just play it on the guitar and say, this is what I'm looking for. Or he grabbed exactly. the bass and he'd say, no, this is what I wanted to do. And you're going, okay, got it. And and nobody else does that. You know, nobody, there's no artist you're going gonna to see on the cover of Bass Player Magazine, Guitar Player Magazine, Keyboard Magazine, uh, Drummer Magazine. No, there's nobody that you're going to get on every cover like that. And yet, Prince was on each one of those covers, and each magazine sold well because we all went, oh, yeah, he's a great drummer. Oh, yeah, he's a great keyboard player. We recognize that. And it's cool to get that word out there to people beyond us, because we're disciples. You know, we're 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 apostles on this stuff. I want to get more people getting that. You know, All right, right. You know, we we need to have people. We're, you're never going to hear Prince of concerts live again, so we need to kind of do word of mouth here. This is this is when we have to be going door to door, knocking on doors. Right. That's the, oh, yeah. that's the type of uh, information that the the younger generation needs to hear right. about print, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and I, like I had the the, the fortunate um, thing of yesterday. I spent a day with uh, a 16 year old Brandon Bailey Johnson, who's um, in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the youngest producer. Wow, and. Um, his hero and his, uh, you know, he looked up to Prince. Yeah. And to see somebody that age, and uh, I think he broke the Guinness Book of World Records at 12 years old. That's crazy. But to see wow. him um, perform uh, as a one man band was uh, very uh, hopeful to me. Yeah. And you have a kid, you have, you have somebody out there that's like that. That the kids around his age or younger look up to him, and then when they ask him, "Well, who inspired you to do this?" and he says, "Prince." Nice. That's what helps keep the legacy alive and spreading well, through the younger generation. Because, right. like I said, I run into a lot of um, younger cats who they never picked up an instrument. They're all about beats. Right. You see what I'm saying? And they don't really know how to create or where that sample came from. They can't recreate the sample. They can just right. sample it. You they know can what take I mean? the drummer and make that and loop it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and 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 to see um, that type of um, talent be on display, it, it made me, you know, say I was I was um, I, I told his mom that it made me emotional. Because it's almost like you said, energy never dies. Right. So while I'm looking at him, it's almost as if I can see Prince. You know what I'm saying? Like in I another form. I love that. I love that you're getting people out there, and not you, but the fact that there are people out there doing this stuff, realizing it. I didn't know how popular. I mean, we all knew Prince was popular. I didn't quite understand how popular he was until he passed. And then I see the Eiffel Tower light up, and I see you know all these different buildings. My Niagara Falls and all this stuff purple, and I'm like, I'm not alone, you know, because most of the time we listen to Prince's by ourselves, you know, occasionally right. we go to a party and something like that. But most of the time it's you driving to work, you are driving home from work, mm -hmm. you listen to headphones, you walk around working out, whatever it is, and you know, we we have our our jams. We go, okay, this is my power jam, this is my romantic jam, you know, whatever it is. I just didn't understand that the world felt the same way as it, and and when mm -hmm. he passed. That the world mourned, and it was like it kind of was. There's a comfort to that, knowing that I didn't know you guys, you know. And then we got to hang out in Minneapolis last week. So it's like mm -hmm. the things that the people I met, the 
people that you find out know this stuff and want this stuff and love this stuff, and the people that it touched, it's it's uh, there's a bond that I could go into a room. I went, I went what was that? Glicks, Glicks. When I go in there, you know that everybody in this room, I've got Glicks, yeah. yeah. I've got eighty percent in common with most of the people in this room, and I'm right. thinking mm-hmm. that's pretty damn cool. You know, because you don't get that in life. You know, the only time you get that is at family reunions or something like that. And I realize this is like my family. I, I mm-hmm. have to, the cool thing is when I when Prince passed, I realized I got a bigger family than I thought. I got a bunch of crazy uncles, and I got a bunch of crazy aunts and cousins and stuff like that I didn't know existed. I found a whole new wing of my family now when Prince passed, and even before that, but just especially afterwards, because all of us realized there's something that unites each one of us. You know, right. when I met each one of you guys, it's like I'm going. You know, there's something here that makes us all have something in common. You know, you meet somebody that talks Prince or quotes a lyric of an obscure song, you're buds. <laughs> you're tight. Right. You're tight. Because you already have that in common. That, to me, is something that I don't know whether Huey Lewis fans have that or other things like that. But Prince fans have that. and 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 we all... Want to talk? I could sit and talk Prince with, with other people that like it for hours, and, and right. talk about, you know what your first story is, your first song you did, your, the song you fell in love to. All this stuff mm-hmm. is to all of us because we all have that, and we all have this. Since I remember when Sign of the Times came out. Oh, I remember I got that album because I was dating this one girl. Everyone has those stories, right. and, and exactly makes us all kind of bonded. You know, and that's that's something yeah. special that, that, like I said, I don't know whether there's other, I know there's other musicians that probably have that, but I don't know if they have it like Prince did. So mm-hmm. that's, that's just me. Well, what right. touched me was mm-hmm. seeing somebody like a um, Elton John after Prince died, you know, when he was in doing his concert, yeah. stop and talk about Prince and, and got emotional. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and these are people who are legends in their own right. We're space the same thing. Yeah. You know, it, it was it was like that was the val. It, it, it wasn't for me um, that Prince needed validation, but for like I said, the younger generation who might not have you know like they're here. Well, Prince ain't had a hit since nineteen whatever. You know what I mean? To see that love, it kind of shocked them into oh my mommy talk about Prince all the time, and I now he it's like. He's all over the place, and people that I look up to, or mm-hmm. is supposed to be great, are honoring this guy like he's, right. you know, the one. You know, because I when L. A. Reid came on talking about Prince is the greatest musician he's ever seen. I had uh, it's funny. I was sitting there with after he passed, I was working someplace, and there was a kid that was probably I think fifteen or so, fifteen or sixteen, and he was like, I don't really know Prince, but. I don't think he's as talented as Kanye. And I was like, we're going to have some words here because... Fighting words. Lay down some science for you, kid. <laughs> Here's a stack of things. Listen to these and come back and talk to me. But he was convinced that he was like, yeah, you know, I think I don't think he had what Kanye had. I'm going, no, no, no. <laughs> what do you mean? Right. Every word in that sentence is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can, how many? Think of how many Prince songs that you know all the words to, all the fills. You'll sit there going, you know, playing the drums in your car on your on your steering wheel. We all know that stuff, and and it's in us. It is, you know. And this is over the course of forty some odd albums. We can. Right. I have to admit, the areas later stuff that I don't know as well. But even then, I've heard them, and all the B sides. And all the rare stuff and the live versions we heard, like you know, you know, we're going oh, but a solo on that live one they did in, in uh, you know, Amsterdam. That's something, you know. We we just know this stuff, and it, it's mm-hmm. it's an illness, <laughs> it's a, you know, but it's it's a it's a good illness, and it's it's what I'm I'm I I can't imagine being like this with any other artist. I like Bo, I love Bowie, and I love the Beatles, and I went through an Adam Ant phase and stuff like this. But there's nothing like Prince. Period. That's, right. that's, that's the way it is. And, and it's like every 
every conversation I have with somebody when they're talking about the best guitarist or best other, always ends up with me going, ah, Prince, <laughs> you know, right. you know, best guitarist, whatever it is, I, I, you know, that's where my friends just shake their heads and go, all right, lunatic, you know, but that's just how it got. <laughs> that's, you know, it, it's, you know, and I still see Purple Rain, and the movie is not that great. The music is freaking great. The performance right. is great. The storyline is good. It's a little dated. But you know what? I'll still watch it at the theater and still get mm. goosebumps when he, he does Purple Rain, even though I've heard that song billions of times. Mm. I still get goosebumps with it. So, you know, right. and maybe just the way I'm programmed. It's timeless, man. It's timeless, but at the same time, yeah. when you look back at it now, you see <clears> all <throat> the talent that was in that movie from, you know, Lisa and Wendy, look what they went oh, on yeah. to do. You know, you got Dr. Fink, you got Brown Mark, you know, Deuce and Maserati, you got um, I'm in there. I'm with Paul <laughs> Peterson in it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, Paul's great. But uh, the time is so good there. And just, right. you know, um, to a lot of people, that was, again, their first introduction to the time. You know, and, and they didn't even know for Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. They, they, they saw, you know, the other guys. They saw Mark mm. and they saw Paul. And they didn't know, you know, what they should be doing. Jerry, they, they didn't know what to expect. <laughs> so the time was great. I mean, Jungle right. Love and The Bird are freaking great. So every time I hear them, they I have to crank that up because... Oh, yeah. You have right. to do that, and I found I was in a uh, I was up in San Francisco, Oakland, uh, at a uh, Prince gathering, and I was doing stuff with my book. But literally, when that when the bird came on, I was up on my seat, and I had my arms up, and, like, and it was like, and the DJ said, the DJ said, uh, oh, look, Dwayne's even jumping up <laughs> the bird. And I'm like, yeah. How can you not? How can you not? This is you have to do this. You, if you don't get get out, get out. You should be dancing to the phone. Yeah, I know. It's just great. That's funny. I love this stuff. Um, You're looking at the book again. Yeah. You're looking at the book again. So, yes, yes. Another one of my highlights. Good. Mid October. <laughs> talking about the book. I'm talking about the so. <laughs> Mid October, 1983. I thought this was interesting, and and I don't know if I disagree with it or. I'm kind of on the fence. Apollonia brought a more pure, innocent, and sensual aspect to the movie. Talking about Purple Rain. Right, right. It would have been really dark with vanity. And Albert Magnolia said that. Um, I don't... Hmm. I, Tell me. Tell me your thoughts. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I feel like vanity... You know, she ultimately had more experience acting. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, right. Uh, Apollonia is beautiful. To a lot of people, Vanity's yeah. a, a lot more beautiful. I think they're you know both gorgeous. I, mean? I think they're both gorgeous. Yeah, for I mean, sure. I, yeah, for they're, sure. Both, they're both stunning women. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. You know. Um, the reason why, okay, I'll tell you why that was said. Uh, that was a quote by Al Magnoli, who directed Purple Rain. And I kind of agree with him because what he was saying, and a lot of other people said, is Vanity had this presence mm. and this smoldering presence that when she walked in the room, it was electric. And he told a story, I think it's in the book, where she came to, to First Avenue and he was up in the balcony and he said he could feel the sizzle in the room not knowing that she walked in the room and this had this kind of energy to her. And I think she's got kind of a, she's got sort of a dirty girl image, at least did at the time, Mm -hmm. Apollonia had a more pure kind of girl next door image, and it was like that was the. Difference. I can see that. I yeah, can I see that a little bit. That's what he's saying. Not that yeah. the one would be better. It would be a different movie, but there was a darker, nastier, well, nasty girl. But and you don't hear a song "Nasty Girl" on the Apollonia album. You, it's, mm. it's more in you know, Spanish villa and things like that. Things you mm. wouldn't hear on the and I say, and both albums are, have their 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 reasons. But there was something about Vanity that was just a, a little bit dirtier. You could see bringing your, you see bringing Apollonia home to your family. I don't know whether you, you could take Vanity home, but your dad would probably be hitting on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but there's just something about Vanity that was, and this is what everybody told me, 
is, is there something about vanity that was a kind of a, um, mm. more s sexual, just more, you, you couldn't help but mm. feel that. Whereas Apollonia is adorable and lovable and sweet and, and things like that. Not that vanity couldn't be sweet, but there was a, just a difference, and it would have been a different movie. Um, and also there was a history of Prince and Vanity that you would have known more when you're watching that movie. Right. It would, you know, whether the acting experience, you would know more just because they have a history. Whereas Apollonia was brought in at the late part um, and did very well with it, but she was brought in a month before they, they started working, you know, and, and, and so, and, and she's amazing to watch. I mean, I just, you know, all of us that summer, I don't know how old you guys are, but that was, you know, that was the date summer. That was the date movie that summer, you know, and, and it's like, you go to the movie, guys see Apollonia, the girls see Prince, you, you're halfway there. So, I was uh, 10 years old, I was ruined, so, the, you know. It, it was all. I was good. four. It, it was, was all. Four. It was all good for me, man. It was all good for me. You know. So. I was. I was four too. Uh, <laughs> I love. I like that baloney, but like yeah. vanity, yeah. vanity. It oozes sex. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like exactly. back in the sixties or the when Raquel Welch was, was at the top of her game. You know, it was like what nobody messing with Raquel Welch back in the day. Right. Vanity, vanity was the same way. You know, I mean, you, I, hey, she made Johnny Carson blush, bro. Right, and I, I do think there's a difference between two. I think that's what he's trying to say. It's not like one is better than the other. Right, they're just it's different. Right. different. You know, it's, yeah. it's like uh, you know, and 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 I think Vanity's movie would have been a really cool movie if she was in it. It would have been fun. In that way, but it would have been a little darker. Where the Apollonia brought a little light to it, um, mm -hmm. kind of rooting for her. Not that you wouldn't root for vanity, just a different kind of thing. So, right. you know, I think there would have been more of an edge, is what Magnolia was trying to say. That's what okay. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Does that makes okay. sense. Yeah. For sure. oh, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Now this this is a question I wanted to ask. Yes, sir. Do you consider now me? <clears throat> I've had this conversation with people uh, even b way back in the day that I thought that one of the first what I would call rap songs or rap sung songs by Prince was Irresistible Bitch. I can see that. I can see and that. I would put that into a, a category like back in the day as far as the, the major pop artist. You know, we came to Madonna, him and Michael or Bruce. He was the probably the first one that kind of dabbled in it to the rap game, even though he might not have considered it rap. <laughs> well, and 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 he, I, on top of that, I wasn't on an album. So right. Maybe, uh, so you know, it might have been a sound that he wanted to try, but he did that kind of stuff periodically, and it was. I, I'm trying to think of other examples of that, but yeah, I mean, I could I could see that. It, precursor to that sort of thing but uh yeah, i guess so even though he said he didn't like rap later and then said he liked rap much later right. um mm -hmm. well, 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 be well, vacillated on that one a bit well i think um, it was obviously he loved rap by the way he snuck it in on crush groove true. you know yeah, what true. i mean yep. with holly rock so yeah i love holly rock holly yeah. rock's a great song holly rock's a hot mm -hmm. song uh -huh. Under yep. <laughs> love that song he always, I, there's certain songs that I, I just wish would have been out there more. Holly Rock is one of those songs that's just and, and we're doing it, you know, and, and you know she's always in my hair or Seventeen Days, you know. That's the cool thing about Prince. Also, it's not only is the album out, but then there's there's about half an album worth of material on B sides that we we get, you know, that's sort of exclusive if you're a big fan. Right. And that mm -hmm. that makes the Purple Riot Rain album better when you can add. Erotic City and, and mm -hmm. those kind of songs to it because all of a sudden you have this bigger album, three side album. Um, and, and Around the World Day had some great B sides on it. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Those kind of things. Definitely. I love that. To me, the, uh, Sign of the Times had a couple of things. You know, mm -hmm. just that. I, I was sad when he stopped doing the B sides because he had a lot of great stuff from the B sides that were kind of weren't really appropriate album stuff, but damn, they they care for it. Good chance. Rock City's a great game. Right. Yes, that that was that was the first B side that I ever discovered at the age of yeah. four, and uh, 
I, I shouldn't have been listening to that, yeah. but I wasn't yeah. even, the lyrics wasn't so much is what uh, moved me. It was just more of the music. I was just, just had this hit, hidden out of groove, and I was just hooked after that. So I know I agree. I agree. It's a, it's a great song. It's a great yeah. song. A lot of B-sides. My it's favorite. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just so many good B-sides. So, and that's a whole other thing. You know, you could just, you know, make an album or two of just his B-sides and be just as good as anybody. He's always in my hair. It's a great song. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Great B-side. Definitely. Great B-side. Great B-side. That, great that, that's cool. I get in the book, I talk about that. A lot of that is based on a fight he had with Jill Jones. And you guys know this. But right. Right. Mm-hmm. And he was fighting with her, and, uh, and she, he wrote the song, and then brought it to her and said, "Here, look, got a song." Kind of, he would do that. He'd write a song for somebody, and either as an apology to have Lisa Coleman sometimes, where he'd write an apology through song, and he gave mm-hmm. it to her. Yo, listen to the song. And she listened to the song, and she goes, "Wait, you just said maybe I'll marry her, maybe I won't." And she's like, "Dude, I make the choice if I get married. You don't make the choice." He got really upset with him. He's like, oh, uh, you know, kind of nervous with it. That's to me. I love hearing that stuff because it make, again makes me go back and listen to the song again, going, oh, he was in a fight with somebody here, and right. this is an apology right. song to her. Right. Ah, and again, he did that song in a day. You know, so right. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. See, see now, see now, I gotta go and listen to "She's Always in My Hair," uh, just right. after hearing that story now. So. Great B side, great B side. That, yes, it is. Is when you hear those kind of stories and you hear, you know, what he, what I could, I could list the who and the what and the when these songs are recorded, but the why is often what makes the song interesting to me. Right. You know, in any mm-hmm. conversation you have with somebody, when you ask them, you know, what were you doing that day, they'll tell you. But if you ask them, why were you doing it that day, that they have to think about that and they have to process. Well, I was doing that because I was hungry. Oh, because I hadn't eaten, because I was working so hard. And then you get this whole story about what happened. It's a why that uh, a lot of people don't even ask those questions. A lot of people just want to know the what and the when and the who, but they don't understand the why is often the the, the, the most satisfying of questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure these people I interviewed got sick of me asking the why. Right. <laughs> right. I've mm-hmm. asked it all the time. Yeah. You know, so... Mm-mm-mm. Now, what else, gentlemen? Uh, this book is amazing. It is. Uh, Let me tell you something. Okay. Okay. Look, if you like the book, just so you know, I'm coming out with a um, uh, expanded version of the book. Right. In November, uh, that has a bunch of songs in it that aren't in the book that came out after. Uh, I got information from uh, engineers and band members and stuff like this after mm-hmm. the uh, book was published. Now, here's a little background about publishing: is if a book is going to come out in November, I had to deliver it in March or April of that year. So last year, about March or April, I'm giving them the book. I can make some changes, but by the time it got out, it had been locked down for five, six months that I couldn't make a change to it. So when it comes out, People that I didn't get the chance to interview came out of the woodwork and said, "Wow, now I see what you're talking about." And I was able to interview a bunch more people. And I thought, "Well, I don't know what to do with this information because I can't, you know, just do another book of the same era." And the publisher came to me and said, "We'd like to make a paperback of the book." I was like, "Okay, cool." But I said, "Tell you what, I've got new information, updated information, clarification, expanded stories, and I'd like to include that." If possible, and they said sure. You know, so I took three months off of work, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to craft this new stuff. And it has probably about 20, 25 new sessions or dates or dates that are changed. You know, um, embellished because of new quotes, new information, songs I've never heard of before. A song called Duncan the Kitty. A song called Be My Hero. A song called The Dawn. Uh, there's a um, I put a little uh, thing on my Facebook group about the dawn. Um, but that kind of stuff. There's there's a bunch of songs that I've never heard of. Details about the Stevie uh, Stevie Nicks song that he did at his house with her. Um, things like that that I didn't mm-hmm. know that are helpful understanding the book. And again, some of the stuff came from stories that these people uh, came out and told me afterwards. Um, I got to interview Bobby Z. I got to interview Wally. Um, got to interview uh, uh, 
Cubby Colby, who was his engineer. Um, mm -hmm. I went back to a lot of people and re-interviewed them with different quotes. Uh, I talked again to Susanna. I talked again to you know, a lot of these people. I sat down and said, can you tell me more information? Because they gave me more information, more quotes. And so that's what's going to be coming out in November, which is the um, a deluxe version of the book. No, I, I don't want to say deluxe. Expanded. It's got an extra 30 pages or so. It's not mandatory that somebody reads it because the first book is, is pretty much self-contained. It has a lot of, most of the same information. But there are more things. If you like that stuff, it's out there for people to get. But it's not one of these things that I'm saying you have to buy this and the old book's obsolete. The old book's great. No, no it just is new stuff. It's like, it's like uh, getting uh, ice cream uh, with your cake. Okay, the cake was great by itself. Ice cream kind of makes it even better. Right. You know, but you don't have to have the ice cream, but the ice cream makes it better. So. Well, well, we here, we here yeah. in the Purple Underground will be purchasing that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, no, yes no, we will. Thank no, you. Good. We it, will be it's going to be pretty cool. I mean, there's some, like I said, there's some things in there that I'm going, wow, I did not know this. And things, when, when I kind of get surprised at stuff, I'm going, hey, that's that's cool, because I kind of got my head in this stuff. So when I find yeah. new songs, and some of it is just, you know, um, there's a couple dates that I had in the book that I had assumed or uh, estimate. I was able to verify certain dates. Um, but there's certain quotes in there that I, I just love. I loved, I got a quote uh, by Morris Day talking about um, uh, recording the song Ice Cream Castle. And it's like, okay, there's a lot of information about that in there. But then I found quotes by Jesse talking about it recently. Where he's, he's confirming some of the things he said where he just, Ice Cream Castle, the song came from a song that he and uh, Morris wrote called uh, Old and Ignite. You know, and so I was like, oh, great. Old Nignan became a song, and they, they changed into that. So they're both talking about this little bit. So it's just more quotes. It's, a, it's like a wider story from these people. Like, right. kind of different pieces. There's, I'll tell you a great story. One of my favorites is uh, Cubby Colby, who is, like I said, his, his engineer um, for his live stuff. Uh, he said, during the 1999 tour, it was 1999. It was Prince. It was Vanity Six, the Time, and Prince. Vanity Six would always play, and, and um, the time would back her up. The time would back them up. Mm -hmm. The time would play, and then Prince would play. Prince would come on stage in a little place behind the curtain, and his instruments were set up there. And when Vanity was out there performing, and the time was playing, he'd grab a bass and start playing along with them. Nobody in the audience knew that. He would do it sometimes. Or he would start mm -hmm. singing, and, you know, kind of harmonizing with the band performing. Or mm -hmm. when the time went out there, he do the same thing, play keyboards or play bass or something like that. Just kind of adding to their sound. But this is just the way he, he just loves music. He would do that, record, you know, play for a little bit, grab a cup of tea, come back and play bass again, play some guitar work, just to add to what they were doing. And I thought, that's this is the kind of guy he is that he wanted, he just had music in him. Had to right. it out. So that kind of stories or things like that. And that, that, to me, those stories make him... Even cooler to me, and I didn't know. You could and it's not that. just like a new chapter. It's like I added things to dates all throughout the book, um, mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of things. There. And on top of that, I'm also trying to work on book two, mm -hmm. which is uh, 1985, 1986, mm -hmm. and that has. Let me tell you the stuff that's in that one. I, I think I know. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's it's crazy. It, it, it goes from the end of the it goes to the end of the purple rain tour, but it's got the end uh, the parade tour. Got mm -hmm. the release of Around the World Day, recording of Parade, recording of Sign of the Times, Dream Factory, and uh, Crystal Ball, uh, Camille album, Parts of the Black album, uh, The Flesh, um, Madhouse. Eight. Yeah. Uh, it's got uh, Sheila's second and third albums, uh, mm -hmm. The Family, The Break of the Family, The Break of the Revolution, the release of Under the Cherry Moon. This is all within the next book. All that stuff in the next book. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you this real quick. This is my research. I was showing, I want you to see this. This is my book of reading. This is all my work, Ooh. a lot of stuff like this. This is, I'll show you what was right. in the first book. This is, this is the first book. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. the first book. That was 500 pages of the book, but that's the, the second book, let's see now, is... This, can you see how much thicker that is? Yeah. Wow. So it's like yeah. it's almost not twice as big, but it's it's got. Um, the first book had about 200, 220 sessions in it, and it expanded to about two hundred fifty. 
the second book starts yeah. at 260 sessions. So it starts bigger already. Mm. And it'll span to like 280, 290 sessions. It's, it's, it's wow. crazy the amount of stuff that I got to do for the second book. And I'm trying to get this done right now. So I'm like, every night, every weekend, I got a, you know, a daughter and a wife, and they're both looking at me going, all right, dude, you know, we got to spend some time together. You know, but uh, mm. I just, I'm trying to get the second book out. So hopefully I'll get the second book out, you know, I don't know when I'll be able to announce that, but I just want to let you guys know what's going on with that. But that would be, because um, to Sign of the Times is probably my favorite era of his stuff. And mm-hmm. so it's all the stuff that went to Sign of the Times and all the stuff that went to Crystal Ball, and all the stuff that went to Dream Factory and all the good and bad of that stuff. And all the, you know, he was, you know, he was, we're in the breakup of the revolution. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a book in itself. So this, so the first book is like the birth of the revolution. The second book is the end of the revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, and it ends with him basically in the studio recording Wally after everybody's gone. And that's that's pretty heavy. You know, the mm-hmm. first book is about the triumph and so the Purple Rain tour. And the second book is about him trying different things and some of them worked, some of them didn't. You know, he, he uh, um, was very successful at certain things and nobody knew Sign of the Times isn't out by the end of the second book. He had recorded it and submitted it but the, the estate, not the estate, the uh, Warner Brothers is telling him you can't do a three album set. You can't do that one. And so he's like, wait, I was the biggest guy, and now you're telling me I can't do some of this stuff? Mm-hmm. That's what the second book is about. It's the struggle of him as an artist. And I think people need to understand is this guy's an artist. At the end of the day, he wouldn't release something that he didn't think had something to say. And I think that's an important thing is what was he trying to say? And Sign of the Times, he had a message. And this is his message. And, you know, this is where he was in his life at the time. And Purple Rain is the same way. Around the World of Day is the same way. And if you listen to Around the World of Day, it's kind of a lonely album. It's a great album. But he's at a point where he's he says words like lonely and alone like four or five, six times in that album. And he's like singing about being this king that's alone. And he has a conversation with God, and God says no. And, and as happy and stuff as, as Raspberry Beret is, he still had some things he was going through. He had some issues he was going through at that time. You know, mm-hmm. who do you trust? You know, you, you got to remember, this is a guy who went from being uh, not orphaned, but just didn't have family around. And so he didn't have a lot of trust in people. And all of a sudden, people started wanting to be around him. You know, and, and you got to you gotta question that. You know, all the people you knew were leaving. You know, people he's known since high school are going. And new people have to come in. And who can he trust? Who can he bring in and, and, and rely on that he knows that he can just cut his back and not want him his money? Right. And, and there were people that really had his best years of heart, but finding them is tough. And I think mm. that that's, that's what part of this book is about, and that's what the second book is about, is finding that. So, you know, that's kind of fun, is this journey that he's taking. And you guys want to see read the second book when it comes out? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Yes, sir. Good. I'm yeah, hoping man. to buy it. I mean, hoping there's people that will be interested in this stuff. Because I, I've got, I'd love to keep doing these books for years. You know. Oh yeah. I'd be very happy uh, <laughs> if, if I do these things until the day I die. I'd be, you'd see me smiling in my coffin. I'd be uh, right. happy. To, you know. I mean, imagine that uh, that you get to do something in your life that uh, involves Prince. You know. On a daily basis, right? right. Cool game that is. Right. Well, yeah. I, I think with, I mean, the, you're, with not, you're doing it. You're doing it with this. And the, right. let me tell you the thing I like about you guys. What you guys are doing is what I totally respect. Is making sure that Prince is not forgotten, and all the things about him, and all the nuances, and all the people that are interesting about Prince are coming to you guys. You're going to them and saying. You know, talk to me about this stuff. We want to get this word out there to people. And the cool thing is these videos out there will be floating around there for years. Mm-hmm. This is something, you know, you'll be able to look back at the archive of stuff you guys are going to have. You guys are going to have, like, a friend's archive of all the interviews you guys have done. And that's cool because people can just look at it anytime and say, oh, look, I want to read, I want to hear about this. And it'll always be there for people to understand. Right. And that's, I think, the thing that you guys have to do and do well. I think that Michael Dean and people like that, there's a lot of people out there that are doing this kind of stuff that right. I love. To me, mm-hmm. you guys 
all of you guys do so many cool things in these podcasts, and the things you guys are you know finding, and the and nuances, and and just the opinions you guys are giving, that's that's gold stuff. I mean, that, that's right. just you know, that's it's so important to the community. And I don't know, if, I don't know if all you guys that do these kind of things get what you guys bring to us, because honestly, it's it's a huge thing when when people are out there. You're spending your free time doing this stuff. Who's paying you guys? You understand what it's like to kind of give. And what you're right. doing is making sure people get the information you have. And that, exactly. uh, that is really selfless. I love that because you guys are saying, I've got information. I want to get this out to everybody because this is cool stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you, have a, it's like you know a great joke and you want to tell everybody. That's what this is. is you guys are finding a way to make sure everybody hears this story or everybody knows these people or this author or whatever it is. And I hope you guys are doing this stuff for years. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, Thank I'd you for saying it. that. We appreciate right. that. We really no, do. From my heart, it really is because right. when I got to meet you guys, I thought, I, I'm looking forward to talking to you. And I know we've been talking about trying to do this, and, and you guys reached out to me and said, let's do it next week. I'm like, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, I would have done it when we were up in Minneapolis, but there was no time. Right. You guys are going right. up there. And you guys are going up there every April, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah we're going on it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be up there every April. I, I, I came sure. home and told my wife. I said, I'm not missing one of these again. I missed. I I went to the first one, but didn't go anywhere. I was doing some stuff there. Right. This was so good, and it, the weather was crazy with snow, and then it became a nice week. And but there was so many fun things. It was, you know. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the, the, the pancake dinner, you know. They, they, yeah, Rodney. Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So much fun. That's why my guys. Some, some, some uh, uh, money. Yeah, you know, it, it was like those kind of things to me. People found a way to make it so that there's a community, and and you guys do this, and so many of these other podcasters do this, and, and yeah, hey, Pure Right Alumni. It, 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 uh, looking at my shirt, see the Rosie shirt. Right. Yeah. Rosie. Pure Right Alumni. They're doing this stuff. You know, that kind of stuff is like, you have people that are trying all kind of got a dose of this energy. And we're all kind of using this to do something good. Uh, yeah. Well, well it's, I'm, glad you guys, oh, I'm really glad you guys are it, 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 It's yeah. stuff like this that keeps us going. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? Yep. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. From I, I remember reading old Uptown magazines to turn it up oh, days yeah. a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The turn it up reissue and all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the vault, I, reading the vault. I love that. You you know, know I can saying? tell you, and I still keep in touch with Pierre Nelson, who doesn't come out much and do stuff, but I still keep in touch with him. And he's so happy to hear that people are enjoying the old Uptown magazines and all this other stuff. I just love that 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 this stuff. And again, there's so many people who are writing books now. I look forward to each one of these musicians writing a book. I like Dez's book. I like Sheila's book. I, I, I will read these things. Granted, I agree with some of the things he's saying. I may not agree with other things he's saying. But I, I want to know they're, they were there. Right, I, right. Would love to see, I would love to see Jesse Johnson write a book. I'd love Susan Rogers to write a book. I'd love Peggy McCreary to write a book. Right. You know, there's so many people in there. I'd love the revolution to write a book. You know, there's so many people that have stories that I don't know that I want to hear. And, and exactly. I, 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 will, you know, I just got done reading Owen Husky's book. I enjoyed that, you know, and it's, it's just there's so many things like this that are just fun to me, and 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 make the music better because I know this, I know Prince in a small way I can. I never met him, but I feel like like all of us, I feel like I feel like I had a connection with him, like all of us, you know. All, Whoa, what happened there? Um, uh, I just feel like I had a connection with him, like like all of us. There was this bond and and. An energy that he would give to all of us. You know, you're in a crowd watching him play, and you all got the tingles. You know, everybody's watching him play this stuff, and you just watch. The cool thing here's the other thing I want to say about his live stuff is there was a danger to what he was doing because he would go off on a limb, and you didn't know how he'd get back. And you right. know, all of a sudden you see him you're going, he's going. I don't know where he's going to be. Oh wait, he come back, or he brings somebody up on stage and he's dancing with him, and then you see him going do his thing, and he's going. And I know he changed the show every night. And that's what I loved about him. He said, oh, you also you're listening. You guys listen to these things. All of a sudden, you're hearing a different riff in a song, and you're going, that wasn't there last night. Hmm. Right. Odd. 
and you just know that this guy was looking to expand at every time. It was never good enough. Every concert, he said, you know what? I can do this better. I can do this cooler. I can make this bigger. We can fill it here. We can do a turnaround here. We can lose this song, bring this song in. Or he'd start doing a riff, and the band would just follow him. Going, oh, where are we going? Okay, we're there. That, right. you know, nobody does that. You know, this is a guy that, you know, and, and some people do that. I mean, Bruce Springsteen does stuff like that, and The Grateful Dead. These days. But I think Prince did it so well. And his catalog oh, yeah. is so powerful. Because even though he'll play for two hours, all of us are sitting there going, well, he didn't play this, 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 and this. Right. Because there's so many good songs. And even after right. that, I mean, for the following tours, he rarely did some of the songs. Computer Blue, I don't think he did for like 10 years after the performing tour. You know, that kind of stuff. He's like, no, it's inappropriate. And just, he had so many other good songs that he didn't have. He did, he did his core songs, but he didn't necessarily do some of the songs that, you know, we were used to. And so that's why the after mm-hmm. thing he did. All of a sudden, he'd break out of Dorothy Parker or whatever it was we're going out. Yeah. Right. I thought jam. Right. You know, so there's some <laughs> of that after show stuff. And again, you didn't know how it was going to go. You didn't know. He's all of a sudden, he starts playing a song, and you know the band's sitting there going, uh... Where are we going on this one? Oh, you're doing just my imagination. Okay. Didn't expect mm. that one? We'll go with it, you know. Yeah. Or start doing a song and you're going, he's doing, what's he doing, rave? Never heard it. I'm there. I'm okay. So that's, mm. that's the thing I love. I used to go see him when he played out here in the Glam Slam in uh, Los Angeles. It was so fun seeing him in a nightclub. Mm. And I miss that. I miss, and I think that people that didn't get to see him play, are, they really missed out on something special. Okay, mm-hmm. sure did. Right, yeah. Sure did. So yep. we would uh we want to thank you for your time, man. You yes, sir. You know thank I mean? you. Is, is thank there you. anybody you would like to shout out right now? Um, well, like I said, I I, I want to make sure I thank Questlove for originally um uh doing the book uh the, the um forward for it. I mean, it's kind of cool looking at the cover and seeing that Prince's name, my name, Questlove's name on the cover. I mean. How did that work out? <laughs> Get my name on the cover with Prince and Questlove. Uh, yep, right there, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. The guys that I have a team that, that helps me with this stuff: uh, Scott, Thomas, uh, Craig, Yost, Cam. These guys are these guys that help me research this stuff. That are so meticulous about making sure I'm I'm right, and I I can't thank them enough because they make it so fun, and they make this this kind of stuff you know, important. I want to thank the, the, the band members. I've interviewed every one of the Revolution for the, um, for the upcoming uh, expanded book. Um, people like Susanna, Jill Jones, all these people I love talking to and, and getting their stories and their personal books. And the fact they've shared with me and they've been in my house and I've been in their houses and there's something nice about that. So I, I, I'm still a Goofy fan. At the end of the day, I'm always going to be a Goofy fan. I'm, I'm going to be this guy that just gets excited when I'm talking to whoever it is. Because, what? Mm. I can't believe they're talking. Wendy's talking to me? You know, Lisa's talking? It, there's something about that. I, and I kind of hope I never lose that fan thing because there's something fun about you know, I come out of the room tell them, you know, my, a big old smile on my face and my wife's like, what happened now? I'm like, I was just talking to so-and-so and I had the best day ever. And <laughs> and that's, that's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And, and hearing you guys like this book Again, the fact that all three of you hold it up that to me when you did that, that made my night because that, that there's something great about seeing yeah. you know that that's pretty that's what's up. That's what's up. I, I know that you guys talk you know, you're gonna use other books and stuff like this, but the fact that you all actually have my book uh, in a hardback and you put it on the shelf and hopefully get the second or third and fourth whatever books you put next to it. That's, oh, yeah. that's you know, so anyway, I, I just want to thank anybody who's had even a hand. There's a lot of people out there in, in my um, fan group and things like this. But I also want to make sure that people know that they can go to DwayneTudal.com, D-U-A-N-E-T-U-D-A-H-L.com, and you can download a chapter from this and get on the mailing list. Uh, you can also order the, um, uh, the paperback. You have to have a paperback there. I'll sign them. i um, selling uh, signed uh, personalized books. Um, my for the next, if you get uh, by the end of July, your name will get in the actual uh, um, paperback. I'll put your name in the paperback. 
I have to stop that at the end of July, but you can order the book through August. It comes out in November. I'm going to be shipping it the same week as Amazon ships it. So All that's right. kind of... So I'm getting it out there. The nice. Same week as Amazon. Um, but the ones that people are beginning will be signed by me. And uh, that's something I love doing. I'll sign a number of them. Um, there'll be a new bookmark, an updated bookmark with this. I love giving out the bookmarks. To me, it's kind of a fun thing to have people to have this bookmark. You see the list of people on the bottom there that, uh, that were interviewed for the book. I, to yep. me, there's something fun about having a bookmark. You know, can I tell you something I do? I go to bookstores, and if I see my book in there, I check a bookmark in there. Mm. Uh, mm. I, I, I want to, and I've even put my bookmark in other people's books. You know, hey, <laughs> look at this, you know, right. little advertising. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I want people to buy their books, and I want people to buy my books. It's, it's kind of a fun. I, I want to make something fun for people because you can take that bookmark and use it in other books. That's, that's a fun right. thing. It's still something extra I want to teach people. I just love. Uh, so. Anyway, sorry I talk all the time. I talk. Sorry. Not, shut, sorry. Me up. shut me up is tough. Well, we, we, what is your, before we go, what is your favorite song? I want to know three of your favorite songs. Favorite Prince song? Up. Okay. Uh, yeah, favorite, favorite uh, song. The Ballad of Dorothy Parker is probably my favorite. Um, Lady Cab Driver. And wow. uh, she's always in my hair. Mm. Right off the top of my head. All right. Mm. See, I get asked this stuff all the time. I'm always putting, yeah. the hot, I'm putting you guys in the hot seat. Now tell me your favorite. Lanny? Okay, man. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my, I always tell the boys since, since I, I've said it, uh, the first time somebody ever asked me this question, <clears throat> I've been trying to stay consistent with it. Say that again, Lenny. Say that again. What is it? House, house quake. I'm a funkster at okay. heart. I'm a funk man. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, baby. Bootsy, James Brown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> King's record. So, house quake for me. And um, if, if I had to go with a one A and a one B. It would probably be uh, since they don't change. We can funk. I'll use that version. <laughs> we can funk, and um, I'm really um, just started. All of a sudden, <clears throat> when I lay my hands on you, man, has been kicking uh, my butt. Mm -hmm. the last month and a half, it just I, I just dreamed about the song. And every day I've been playing it, and it's like mm -hmm. it's like that. Like every year, I have a top three or four, but I try to keep House Quake at number one. Okay, I get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But sure. like I said, his catalog, uh, we talk about this all the time, is second to none. And the only group that I think that might have a catalog as big as Prince's that could maybe compare to Prince's is. Parliament Funk and Delic and George Clinton in the next okay. group. That's right. about mm. it to me. You know. Right. But uh amazing, man. That's why yeah. I, I love the book, man. Just to see all them songs. Good. And mm -hmm. like you said, two or three songs a day by one cat. And then this is from Bootsy saying, Hey man, what we right. were doing we had Gary Scheider, myself, right. you know, and and, and George oh, yeah. and, oh, yeah. you know, uh um Maceo was in the group. We had all these great musicians putting out their product, but he said Prince is one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And finally, your last songs. What's your favorite? Uh, I gotta go with Erotic City. Probably, it's probably like my favorite. Um, uh, Purple Rain, of course. Um, I want to be a lover. Got yeah, I gotta go with that. When doves cry. Uh, DMSR, right? And I'm gonna throw a ballad in there. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, oh, wait a minute, uh, controversy. You gotta throw that one in there. No, Micah, you have to break it down to three, three songs. <laughs> three. <laughs> three, three. Don't don't be trying to be out. E. You uh, have right. to do three. Hey, I'll tell right. you mine. after you're done. After you're done, I'll tell you mine. So go ahead. You okay. can't say the, you can't say Prince's remake of Bad. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't know what they say. We'll see. Yeah. Right. So, okay. You're, um, what, was the, what was the ballad you were going to say? Uh, I would say Do Me Baby. 
All right. That's good. Yeah, that's probably my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I would say my favorites. Let's go crazy. The extended. Mm. Only about the extended version is good. Great. Uh, the Exodus Exodus has begun. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And now uh, you want to talk Parliament? That that's that's as thick as you're gonna get with that stuff. Yeah. There's something about that. Uh, I'm probably 17 days. Hmm. That, my other one. That's but, another one. Yeah. yeah. I like I that one. I mean, nobody. It's, but as soon as somebody says, "But mine changed by my mood too," I may be a day. I'm like, you know what? This is the song I want to hear. This Dorothy Parker maybe the song I'm hearing that right. day. Mm-hmm. It depends on what I'm I'm thinking. But if I want to have a good time, let's go crazy. It's not a dance song, but there's something about it that gets my blood going. If I need right. to get more fast, I have to hear that song. Um, but the the excess has begun. It's one of these hidden ones that is. It's long, which is cool. Ten minute song. It's it's dense, you know. You know, it's it's multi layered. There's just so much to it, and there's just something. I love his message in it. He's like talking about you know the record people and stuff like this. So you know where he was at that time. Damn, that's a funky song. Yes. And, yeah. then, and again, one of these things that most people forget about is and and some of that album's really good, but that song alone is so damn good. Yeah. So. Damn good. And I would throw in some other stuff like uh, Glamorous Life or things like that that are just really great songs. Right. Or a time song or two because there's so many good songs to walk or something like that. But, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Right. Just, just, and, and most of mine are more upbeat. The ballads I like, but the, the ones I, I can listen to over and over and over are the upbeat ones. You know, mm. so, yeah. Even 1999, things like that. So. But yes. I, my would be those ones. So. That explains me a little bit. Right, right. Maybe one, so, day, maybe so. one day I'll be able to write about the excess that's begun. Years. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. I got three sales then. <laughs> Already. <There we> go. <laughs> Already. Yeah. No. Well, great, guys. Thank you. Thank. This has been a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed this. I was, oh, hoping, yeah. I was hoping this would be fun, but this is even better than I thought. So, cool. We look forward to it. Excellent. Oh, yeah. If you need anything else, well, let me know. And when I got more stuff coming out, when the next book's coming out, we'll do this. And when we see each other up in uh, Minneapolis again, oh, we'll yeah. do something. Yeah, yeah. We, we definitely appreciate you and the work appreciate that you do. For yes. Sure. And, yes. We, and go out and purchase this book if you have not Thanks. purchased it. Purple Write a Army. Amazon. Purple Write Army. A on Amazon. Do a review on Amazon. Those things help. Yo. Yo. Thank you, guys. I told y'all mm-hmm. in my last book. If y'all ain't on the Purple Army train, get y'all ass off and make room for somebody who want to get on it. All right? Exactly. Get this book. Thank you, guys. All right. What it is. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Thank and you. We are the Purple Thank Underground with Dwayne Tudor. Right. Hey. Yeah. Paul Brother DT. <laughs> DT. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you. All right. Peace. Have a great night, guys.